Let's talk about Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes, because, I mean, they have been, you know, two of the key people behind this, you know, nearly, you know, three year revival of WWE going back to Cody's return at WrestleMania in 2022. Uh, Roman has been the main player for this company that certainly precedes uh, the TKO era going you know, really till 2015 when they earmarked him as the heir apparent to John Cena. Um, what do you think is let, let's start with Roman Reigns and what you feel are the strongest arguments for Reigns going in because he is a he is a divisive one among the voters. Can, can I give you the arguments against him? He, yeah, he was Go. he was a huge failure. Um, he was pushed to the moon and over pushed to the moon. He shoved down people's throats. He, he was not a draw. And if, if he if you even and maybe you want to even be skeptical that he even is a draw now, it's just the brand that's a draw. And all this business that WWE has done, you know, while he's been one of the main players has just been a a an act of inertia and he it, it should have done even better if not for how um at, at least we could say how how poorly he was used or how over pushed he was in an era where w did become less popular from 2015 which i was i would mark as the beginning of his big push where he wins the royal rumble in january that year and from 2015 16 17 18 19 these are years where it's a multi-year consecutive decline in attendance in TV ratings, even probably adjusting for cord cutting uh, in, in merchandise sales. Their consumer business really went down over the course of time where he is the top guy. I I'm voting for him, by the way. <laughs> yeah, no, it's I think that you have to certainly look at, at that period. But I think we also have to view it in uh, in the sense that was there a decline in WWE's <laughs> business? Absolutely. Was this a money losing period? Like this was still a very profitable period for the, the the company. And was Roman Reigns the Roman Reigns is your avatar for that period that I think will collectively be looked upon as among the worst creative eras of the company. Yeah. I would cite from I would say twenty seventeen to twenty eighteen, right up until the the transfer of power. Now, in the wake of that, the peaceful has come, transfer of power. Yes. Uh, the, the transfer of power, as we will uh, la label it. Um, from I, I would say avatar is a really good word. I think I think Roman Reigns was an avatar for Vince McMahon, and that's why he was rejected so strongly. And when so many people were calling for Reigns to, and, and I, I will I will somewhat defend the, the, this period is that you know the, the turnaround I think to the public sentiment of Roman Reigns comes with. The heel turn. And that is still, um, you know, that's two years under Vince McMahon that this bloodline program begins. Um, I don't think it was as hot as it would get from kind of the Sami Zayn period where it seemed like this became this episodic programming for the, the company and you have seen over years the rise of Sami Zayn the rise of Jay Uso but the guy that has been the central figure here is Roman Reigns and when they finally leaned into what the audience and that's had another been, argument against that this this bloodline thing isn't successful until and because of Sami Zayn not Roman Reigns I think though you take out Roman Reigns and do you have that that heel figure that can be placed into Roman Reigns role. Like I, I don't view Roman Reigns as just this stand in that anybody could have played that even a Drew McIntyre at that time, or, um, you know, Brock Lesnar was, was not around to be this kind of uh, figure either. Um, I think that Roman Reigns, I think over time is going to be viewed like for, for better or worse, this guy has been the main player of WWE going on a decade. And through that time, it has been uh, the highest period for this company. And yes, a lot of that gets assigned to, well, it's it's the WWE brand, but I think it gets this gray area where the negative is on Roman Reigns' part. The positive is because of the brand. I think you have to give both blame and responsibility to the performer in some cases, while also knowing that this guy is wrapped around a company that... Um, you know, is in this guaranteed rights era where um, it is somewhat turnkey, like it was virtually impossible for this company to lose money during these periods. And the, the bloodline, he's the most important character in even, you know, it's Sami Zayn has not been heavily involved in the bloodline storyline for a couple of years now. I know he's dabbling again, um, but even even in recent weeks, as of right now, um, the bloodline storyline is popping quarter hours and we're seeing that sort of corroborated 
you know, with all the noise that are in court hours, we're seeing it corroborated with the interest in, in those particular uh, videos on, on YouTube. Um, and we've, we're now in this era, uh, in, in, with WrestleMania 40, where, um, he, along with others who are also <laughs> in this hall of fame, uh, main event in WrestleMania two nights and at almost double the ticket prices of, of the prior year. Um, and this coming year, um, will, will probably be another iteration of that, but, but that's not what we're counting here, of course. Um, but SmackDown ratings improved, um, with him as, as the, the key figure. Now SmackDown was canceled. I'm, I'm almost talking myself into it, but SmackDown was basically canceled. I wouldn't characterize it that way, but you say, look, SmackDown didn't uh, have the value that they thought it was going to have. And Roman Reigns was the biggest figure there. So why should, you know, why, why should you look for Roman, look at Roman Reigns positively when you've got this TV deal in the, the biggest piece of business that companies have today where it didn't work out as well. Now they got a $287 million deal up from a $205 million deal. Yeah, but that, that was basically the, the, the rate of an escalator, uh, from one year to the next. Um, but I do think he's, you know, in this era where WrestleManias are in stadiums, um, where he's been the biggest star and the biggest draw of anybody on this roster over the course of, you know, uh, at least five years. Um, and W is doing really hot business. Business is improving. It's on the upswing in TV ratings and ticket sales, uh, in large part because of him. Uh, there are others, including Cody Rhodes, who I think get a lot of that credit as well. And that's I'm why I'm going to vote for Cody as, as well. Is is Cody's uh, inclusion like? Is, is there any argument for Cody Rhodes pre return to WWE, or is this um, like like how much do you put into Somewhat. Cody of just the, the AEW impact is really what we're we're talking about? Because I, I, uh, I think the AEW impact is it's it's a large piece of the Young Bucks case. Not just that the Young Bucks were great wrestlers, which they are, and are maybe arguably one of the best. You know, maybe, maybe arguably the best. In, in ring tag team ever you could argue that um but the historical influence that that the existence of AEW, especially now that we know it's probably going to be financially viable going forward and the the effect that that has had on everybody throughout the industry whether you're talent whether you're uh, staff working in the back or whatever it is um the the they could have if they had made different choices they could have just signed with wwe and worked for wwe and made great livings but they decided to Go along with this this guy Tony Khan, who is who had no business in the wrestling industry before, and start up a whole new company that has created a, a competitor, if for talent and staff, if nothing else. I I think that the Bucks have a very very strong case. Like they I like I, I give them more uh, to the startup of AEW as um, being responsible than than I do Cody. Uh, then even like a Kenny Omega. I mean, Jericho was very important, but I think at the at the like the the contact first made was to the Young Bucks by Tony Khan, and you could certainly argue that. And it wasn't um, you know, Jesse Collings brought this up. I think it's an important point that sometimes gets overlooked. Is that it was not a case of just snapping your fingers and having this viable alternative right out of the gate and all that demand. It was the groundwork that was laid for years by the young bucks doing being the elite with the bullet club and that they became like they were the pulse of the independent scene that created this wave of demand that led to this explosion in 2019 and they got out of the gate so hard so hot i think a lot of that is from that indie boom period that the bucks were leading the charge of for for years and seeing what what they were they were doing at Ring of Honor and with the New Japan shows in in the US they were like this this was a real like uh movement that they had cultivated and uh, Cody benefited from that too yeah the the bull club as a as a valuable piece of ip uh in in the US and helping New Japan become more popular in the US the height of, of New Japan's popularity is when the Bucks and Cody too and Kenny Omega are big stars for that audience in the US and, and Western markets generally. <laughs> 